Michael Gallagher again. Today we're going to talk about shoulder pain. Uh, my assistant Shannon is here with me. And we're going to first talk about things that can cause shoulder pain. Again, these are some videos that have been produced to be used when we cannot get to our healthcare provider, when we cannot get to the physical therapy office or the orthopedic surgeon um, during this pandemic of uh, COVID-19. Uh, when we're under quarantine and we can't seek medical attention, uh, these videos may help to bridge the gap. Again, never replacing seeing your orthopedist or physical therapist, but something to help with the pain while you're at home prior to seeing your healthcare professional. So you wake up one morning and you have shoulder pain. What are some of the reasons that we have shoulder pain? Most common, bursitis, tendonitis, tears of the rotator cuff, or adhesive capsulitis, or frozen shoulder. Some basic things or conditions that can cause shoulder pain. We're gonna talk about them today in general and how we treat the pain from all of these injuries. So beginning stages, how do we decide what's going on at the shoulder? Well, what is the difference between a tendonitis and a bursitis? First thing we want to look at is active range of motion. So what we're going to do is have Shannon lift her hands up and over her head comfortably and down. And looking for normal range of motion, looking to see if there's any pain. We're going to bring the arms forward, up and over the head and down. And you may want to do this in front of a mirror at home. See how you're moving. You want to make sure your arms are moving steadily up, not substituting or tilting or adding some shoulder motion in there. The next two motions we want to look at are internal and external rotation. The best way to do this at home is first taking your hands, clasping, putting them behind your head. Let's try that, John. You're going to take your hands, bring them behind your head, and bring the elbows back, looking at external rotation at the shoulder joint. And next, bring them down comfortably and bring them behind the back and reaching up, up, so bend the elbow, reaching straight up the back. Uh, let's turn to the side, Shannon, so we can show that. So, hands up, and then reaching towards your scapula, towards your wing bone. That's called internal rotation. The four primary motions at the shoulder joint. Now those motions may hurt with all of those conditions. Bursitis, tendonitis, adhesive capsulitis, the biggest difference we'll see if somebody's developing an adhesive capsulitis, or what we like to call a frozen shoulder, uh, which may occur with chronic shoulder pain, is those motions will be limited in a particular order, what we call the capsular pattern. The capsular pattern would be, Shannon would have the most motion in flexion, second most motion in internal rotation, then abduction being limited with external rotation being the most limited motion. Uh, again, what we call our capsular pattern. What is the capsule? The capsule is that piece of saran wrap, which we talked about earlier, which encapsulates the ball and socket or the glenohumeral joint. Unlike the hip joint, where we have a ball sitting inside a socket, in the shoulder joint, the head of the humerus or the ball is actually three times larger than the socket. So have, instead of having a ball in a socket, we have a ball sitting on top of a socket or a plate. That plate is deepened by a labrum or a lip of tissue and then further deepened or stabilized by what we call the fibrous capsule, a piece of saran wrap which holds that ball on that socket or holds that ball on that plate. That piece of saran wrap or fibrous capsule with decreased motion, with decreased mobility, will become very, very tight. Um, kind of like shrink wrapping a boat or placing your wool sweater in the dryer. It becomes very tight and restrictive, and then we have to stretch that out again. But let's talk about, in general, shoulder pain. How do we determine if our pain is coming from bursal tissue, a non-contractile structure, or muscular tendinous tissue, something that can contract. So a general rule of thumb is if pain occurs with active range of motion or resisted range of motion, hold there Shannon, 
and I push down and try to resist, we can assume that that whole forward channel pain may be coming from the contractile structure, the muscle or the tendon. Generally, pain from a non-contractile structure like the bursa, the bursa we talked about earlier being those little sacs of fluid that act as cushions or shock absorbers between the muscles and the bone, well, they, they become painful when we compress them, squeeze them. So much more painful with passive range. We bring the arm across and squeeze that sac, squeeze that fluid-filled bursa in the shoulder. Again, more indicative of non-contractile or bursal pain. Um, at this point, not necessary for you to diagnose or determine the difference. How are we going to treat pain at the shoulder joint? Like any other joint of the body, when we have swelling or inflammation, we want to use ice. A question I get many times in my physical therapy clinic is, should I use hot or should I use cold? We're going to talk about that. We'll see you on our next